<laughs> All right, I'm playing around with ultra low watt torch. I guess me and JD are in a bit of a contest. I think I got him on this one. Let me shut the light off. All right, I'm up on the flame. <laughs> See that little tiny flame? To give you a comparison, there, my finger's touching the needle. It's very, very, very small. I'm touching against it, I'm not behind it. What the hell? Okay, to show you it's a real flame, I have a... There's a piece of paper, you can see it got holes in it. Jeez, there's, there's really a flamer. See it make it real weird, but real white. It's definitely a fire. And now we're running at 9 volts, and you see I'm hooked. No bullshit with the wire in here. We got one alligator on one terminal, one alligator on the other. My amp meter, you're actually supposed to do your wire dead center of your clamp. 1.1 amp, 1.2. I say 1.2 because it is floating around. So 1.2 amp. At, you want to go with 9 volt? 1.2 amp. Let me run the math real quick. 1.2 amp times 9.0 volt 10.8 watt that's that flame here's something I wanted to show you guys on all this messing around I'm trying to do with low flow you get a lot of flashbacks so I switched this is a silicone line that you use for an air for airline for a fish tank I run that from my torch head to my HHOG Labs sledgehammer. This is the most badass piece of equipment I've ever bought for HHO. I would advise anyone, anyone to buy one. I've had quite a few flashbacks where actually, was it this one? No, this one. Okay, you see here's your 3 8 line from Lowe's. This was off the inside of the roll, you know, so it already had these bends in it when I got it. Every single one of these corners. See, so it blew the corners apart. There was one there, one here, and I think one off the other piece that I already chopped off, but it actually did blow the line apart. See where it's split running along there? But that was at like 20 watts or something. And we're still, I'm not, but it's not, my readings ain't gonna change. My cell temperature don't change. I've just been sitting here for like 45 minutes. I didn't want to, uh, I can back this torch up and then light it and it will burn for long enough for me to make a video. You know what I mean? I, I could back the system up and I have, see I have my balloon in here. This was originally for flashback concerns. It says there's no water in this one, but I figured if it blew, it would pop the balloon out. And it actually turns out it makes a really, really good pressure gauge. I, I mean, I don't know what pressure it is, but I can tell if I'm getting more than I was. So I'm running from the cell, up that line, into my reserve bubbler. You get your bubbles coming in here, water back out to the cell, dry gas to the bottom of this bubbler, bubbles through this, dry gas to here, to the top of this, and this is all dry, no water in it. My output back out here to the sledgehammer and to the torch tip. Now inside of these bubblers, I took a piece of 
I'm not sure what side it is. The hard line that goes inside of a ice maker in a fridge. It's like a hard thermal line. You can heat it up and bend it to where you want it. But there's a piece stuck in there that runs as best as I could do about halfway inside of there to keep my bubbles from rolling up the walls. And there's one in this one. And then I put one inside of the top of the here and run it up into the corner so I can have my water line almost coming out of the cap. And I still don't get any water coming across. Same thing in this one. Tube sticking out in the middle to keep the bubbles off. And then a tube stuck the inside of this barb fitting running to the over inside of here so I can keep this completely full of water. Which now it seems silly doing all the concerns after that, but you can't trust one thing too much, I guess. But we're still at the nine volts, one point two amp. Flame's still burning good. Here's our piece of paper again. Sorry guys, I was watching what I was doing. I should try a piece of uh, real thin metal and heating some water up. But it's still, this has been running at this, if anyone's going to play with a low watt torch, I would advise running high watts until you can put your tip down in here and make bubbles that pop. It took me probably approximately 10 minutes running at 10 watts before it evacuated all the oxygen it, or the fresh air it had sucked in there between cooling. You know when it cools it just draws air back in. So it took a while to pump all that air out when you're running that kind of low watts so I don't don't want to see anybody get discouraged because they kept trying to light it and trying to light it and it didn't work. If you put your lighter to it and it moves the flame and it doesn't light, you're just blowing air. You just need to wait a little bit. Like I said, stick it in your water, wait till the bubbles will pop. Pull it out of there, I guarantee it lights up. It, it's either going to light and hold a flame or it's going to flash back. And I would advise, I can't, if you just try a piece of this tube, put it in your mouth and blow on it, you're not going to have any concerns about it flowing gas rates. I'm saying you can, you're probably blowing 20 liters per minute through it at less than half a PSI but there's not it's no restriction man it's and then whenever I have a flashback it just sounds like a boom instead of it blowing them lines all apart because it got a big fat meaty line to blow up you know there's a big difference in the amount of gas that's inside of this tube compared to what's inside of that when it does burn up so when I have a flash it pops them lines off but instead of sounding like lightning just blew through the roof, it's just a little pop. And it's, it'll burn you from about, about an inch away. It starts getting a nice little heat point on there, enough that I can feel it. It will blister you up if you left it there. So there's my latest addition to the uh, I don't know what are we gonna call this the HHO torch limbo see how low you can go 1.25 amp 9.06 volts There we go, that shows it up a little better. That's, I'm using the infrared on the... I have a night vision and I believe it pulls the infrared screen off of the chip inside there. Yeah, even in the, with the light it makes you be able to see it better. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. And might I add again, I would advise anyone that's doing anything with low flow stuff, you are going to have flashbacks. You are going to have flashbacks. You are going to have flashbacks. <laughs>